today I am going to give you 15 signs that you can identify if you or a loved one has a group think mindset and 10 tips on how to avoid it. But before we begin, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to my podcast. Now, without further ado, let's start the show. Welcome to Thinking to Think Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. A, also known as M.A. Aponte, author, or just Mike Aponte. And today, this episode, we are going to discuss the dangers of groupthink and how to avoid it. Before I get into it, I want to give you a distinction between groupthink and mass psychosis. Now, some of you may have heard what it is, some of you have not. I do plan on making a full episode on mass psychosis. However, I just want to give you some differences, some compare and contrast. Mass psychosis and groupthink are distinct psychological phenomena, but they share some similarities. And some will argue, even to some extent, even I will argue, they're they're more related than there are different, but I want to give you those key differences between the two. Now, mass psychosis, by its purest definition, is a social phenomenon when a large portion of a population exhibits symptoms of delusion, irrational beliefs, or collective hysteria. It often arises in response to specific events, fears, or misinformation. And some of its characteristics of mass psychosis is marked by the widespread acceptance of false or irrational beliefs, often fueled by emotional contagion and peer pressure. It can lead to collective behavior that is at odds with reality or common sense. Let that sink in. And I'll say it again. Uh, it can lead to collective behavior that is at odds with reality or common sense. Now, uh, because I am trying to not be um, too aggressive uh, on this podcast, I'm going to give you the most simplest examples. One is the historical instance of mass psychosis, uh, which is the uh, Salem Witch Trials the witch hunts of the 17th century, uh, and the intense anti-Semitism and the widespread support for the policies of the Nazi regime during the rise of Nazi Germany. And those two can equally be considered mass psychosis. And I want to summarize this. The key differences is that the group think primarily pertains to small groups making poor decisions due to conformity and a desire for cohesion. While mass psychosis involves a larger population exhibiting irrational or delusional beliefs, often driven by emotional contagion and fear. Both phenomena, however, highlight the impact of social influence and conformity on human behavior and decision making. Now, what I'm going to give you, what I've been giving you is the purest form of the definition without considering, and this is very important, that social and corporate media, so social media and corporate media, um, makes the world smaller. And small groups, if you want to compare it to large groups, are relative. What might be small to me may be large for you. So those are distinctions that you need to consider. Because sometimes groupthink is mass psychosis, and mass psychosis is sometimes just simply groupthink. Now, groupthink... The definition is a psychological phenomenon in which group of people often in pursuit of uh, consensus and cohesion make irrational or poor decisions. In groupthink, the emphasis is on maintaining harmony within the group, which can lead to the suppression of dissenting viewpoints, critical thinking, and constructive criticism. You, we see this, and you can see more groupthink activities, and it could be in the workplace. It could be in your home. It could be um, in your social outlets or social media groups that you are that you're a part of. It, it's also known as the uh, echo chamber. Now, here are some characteristics. 
Uh, groupthink often results in strong desire for uh, unanimity, an illusion of invulnerability, self-censorship, collective rationalization, and the belief in the inherent morality of the group's decisions. So an example of this was the Challenger space shuttle disaster in 1986. Um, Engineers who had concerns about the launch didn't speak up due to the group's strong desire to proceed, resulting in a tragic outcome. Now, again, I'm not trying to be, um, uh, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm, the podcast has never, I never tried to offend. I want to give everybody an opportunity that's listening to just step away from whatever bias or beliefs they have. So I'm trying to give you examples that is just a pure, um, pure cut examples. Now, groupthink is also is a phenomenon that occurs when people within the group become overly concerned while maintaining group unity and harmony at the expense of critical thinking and decision making. Um, and this can lead to flawed decisions and poor outcomes, similar to the the space shuttle. A disaster in 1986. So, um, I want that to sink in. The differences. There's not much differences. Uh, it's very distinct. However, they have more in common than they do um, in their uh, differences. Now, here are 15 signs that you or someone you know have a group think mentality. One, illusion of invulnerability. The group believes it is invincible, leading to overconfidence and lack of consideration of potential risks. Two, rationalization. Group members rationalize or downplay warnings, dismissing dissenting opinions as unimportant. Three, beliefs in the inherent morality of the group. Members assume the group is inherently moral and overlook unethical actions. Four, stereotyping outgroups. The group stereotypes those who disagree with them as outsiders or adversaries. Five, self-censorship. Members withhold their opinions or doubts to avoid conflict and maintain group harmony. Six, direct pressure on dissenters. Pressure is exerted on those who voice dissenting opinions, causing them to conform to the majority view. Seven, illusion of unanimity. Silence is interpreted as agreement, creating a false sense of unanimous support for a decision. Eight, mind guards. Certain individuals act as mind guards by shielding the group from dissenting information or opinions. 9. Selective information processing. The group selectively focuses on information that supports their viewpoints and ignores contradictory evidence. 10. Collective rationalization. Members collectively justify decisions that may not be well-founded, ignoring potential pitfalls. 11. Ignoring ethical or moral consequences. Ethical concerns are disregarded in favor of group cohesion or achieving the desired outcome. And ethical or moral, uh, those two words are different philosophically. I do recommend you check out one of my episodes on morals and ethics in which I break that down, the differences, and uh, compare and contrast that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Twelve, pressure for uniformity. There is a strong desire for all members to conform to the group's viewpoint, stifling diversity of thought. Thirteen, lack of critical evaluation. The group fails to critically evaluate its decisions or alternatives. 14. Failure to re-examine assumptions. 
the group doesn't revisit its initial assumptions, even in the face of challenging circumstances. And finally, 15. Symptoms of over-optimism. Group members exhibit over-optimism and overconfidence in their plans or decisions. Recognizing these signs can help individuals and groups identify the presence of groupthink and take steps to encourage more critical thinking, open dialogue, and better decision-making process. If you find yourself in any of these steps, it's time to self-reflect on your decisions and start practicing critical thinking. Now, I promised I will also give you tips on how to um, break away from the groupthink mentality. So here are some independent thinking and open debate within our group tips. And I'm going to give you 10, as promised earlier, to help you avoid this group thing and continue the use of critical thinking. One, encourage diverse perspectives. Diverse perspectives bring a wealth of ideas, experiences, and insights to the table. They challenge groupthink and lead to more comprehensive, innovative solutions. And an example of this is discuss real world, uh, dis- have a discussion of real world examples where diverse perspectives lead, uh, lead to better decisions, such as the success of a company that values diversity in the workplace. You can do that without um, being pushed aside or being adverse adversary. And if you find yourself unable to work with that group and they cast you out, then this is more of a cult mindset. So be careful with those groups. So step one, as I said, encourage diverse perspectives. Step two, assign a devil's advocate hate the term, but the term, name, you know, personally, but um, the meaning is important. The devil adv- Because the devil's advocate role encourages healthy skepticism and constructive criticism. It prevents complacency and ensures a thorough examination of options. Share stories or case studies of organizations that are successful and employed a devil's advocate resulting in improved decision-making. Find them. They're out there. That Someone that is not in, the, not in the circle that's willing to step out, have confidence, and challenge the status quo um, and give you honest feedback. Which leads me to number three, anonymous feedback. Anonymity fosters honesty, unbiased input. It allows team members to express concerns or alternative viewpoints without fear of of reprisal. So, explore the benefits of anonymous feedback in systems in different settings. Uh, This could be online forums in the workplace or suggestion boxes. If you feel your organization, whether it's social or professional, is it a group think? Maybe having anonymous feedback, more people will come out and have more honest opinions. So it's something to consider. Number four, implement decision-making techniques. Structured techniques provide a framework for decision-making. They help reduce cognitive biases and ensure that all aspects of a problem are considered. Yep. Five, establish clear decision-making procedures. Clear procedures define roles, responsibilities, and expectations, reducing confusion and ambiguity in group decisions. Um, The best way I can put it in its application, discuss the impact of well-defined procedures in organizations, such as in risk management or project management. It is important to have these procedures in place, not just to help the group think more critically, but it protect it gives individual protections of liability. Six, encourage independent research. 
Independent research empowers individuals to validate their own ideas and think critically about the information they encounter. Seven, foster a culture of critical thinking. A culture of critical thinking nurtures an environment where questioning, curiosity, and evidence-based decision-making are valued. And I cannot stress this. The fact that you're even listening to this is fostering your own critical thinking. That's why I tell everyone to please like, share, and subscribe. Um, build that community of critical thinkers. I wrote a book called The Logical Mind. A Learn Critical Thinking to Make Better Decisions. It is on your favorite uh, bookstore. You can order it there. All you have to do is search for um, Lo The Logical Mind or M.A. Aponte, A-P-O-N-T-E, and you will find my books. Uh, my book has questions in the end of each chapter and it also helps you and your loved ones and your friends develop critical thinking skills um, as far as it has a whole section on case studies uh, that I've researched personally um, gathered a bunch of information on the history in order to show you my way of thinking so it better prepares the reader hopefully you that you too can develop your own way of thinking. So these are examples. They're not set in concrete, they're not set in stone. They are fluid like water and it can be designed in order to to help you develop your own journey of being a critical thinker. So I highly recommend the book. I'm also creating a course that I will be promoting soon. It will be in Udemy, Skillshare, as well as if you have children or teenagers, I am creating a course for the Tuttle Twins on critical thinking. So be on the lookout for that. Now, let's continue. Eight, monitor group dynamics. Recognizing group dynamics is essential to identifying when groupthink might be occurring and taking corrective action. So, what you want to do is discuss how awareness of group dynamics can lead to improved teamwork and more effective problem solving. Um, if they are genuine about solving problems, they will hear you and not push you away or admonish you or, you know, just to basically talk trash or demonize you for your ideas. That's something to consider. Number nine, regularly review decisions. Regularly review this, uh, promotes a learning culture where past decisions serve as a lesson for future critical thinking. So share case studies. Share my book. Share this podcast. Share other podcasts that discuss critical thinking. Build, a, build the ideas of critical thinking and... Nurture it. Be the example. Don't just say don't just say it. Do it. And you will see the growth expand within your own inner circles. The last thing that I will say is, and that's number 10, seek external input. External input provides a fresh, unbiased perspectives and can prevent an organization from becoming insular. In other words, by having people outside the group evaluate and give you their opinions and their ideas, you avoid the, you will have an unbiased perspective, number one, and number two, you avoid that groupthink mentality. And make no mistake, groupthink is a dangerous phenomenon that can lead to flawed decisions and poor outcomes. By recognizing the signs of groupthink and taking steps to encourage independent thinking and open debate, we can avoid its negative effects and make better decisions as a group. I want to thank you all for listening to this episode. I really hope that you share, like, subscribe, re-listen to this, write things down. And I can't, ex I can't express that enough. Critical thinkers, my fellow critical thinkers, you need to write things down. 
You need to be able to take notes and get this information, reinforce it, and then share it. Don't be selfish. It's not going to help you, your mental health, if you become a critical thinker and everyone else around you is not. Okay? It is not healthy. You will get lonely, which I made a whole episode on loneliness and critical thinking. So um, also listen to that. Um, but with all the pu- plugins aside, thank you for listening. I appreciate you. I love you guys. Um, please take care of yourself. Take care of others. And be safe in this crazy world we live in. Thank you for listening to Thinking to Think. Have a wonderful day.